Welcome back to another episode of I've Never Liked You with me, Mateo Lane, and Nick Smith. It's a 15-minute podcast where we talk about things that we hate and love. And today, we're talking about Avatar. Now, the only Avatar that I like is Avatar The Last Airbender. Which I don't know what that is. Well, they made made a movie that M. Night Shyamalan made a movie that, I mean, he just, I don't know what happened to him, but he took this show. It's about this, you would actually really like it. It's like about a kid who there's four nations, earth, fire, wind, water, and yet they control the elements and the fire nation took over and the avatar who has control of all four elements is supposed to sort of save the world and he disappeared and comes back a hundred years later and you know, you get it. But um, I don't get it, but okay. Yes, you do. Come on. It's like, it's like the fifth element kind of like the five member. Fifth, Fifth Element with Bruce Willis. Remember, yeah, remember. Loved that movie. I mean, it is a great. That is great movie. Iconic, right? But like the one being to protect the world, that kind of thing. So, um, well, these avatars are about water, right? Well, I guess in trees, or that's all we've been introduced to. I have to be honest with you, James Cameron has, has to be stopped. Has to. <laughs> well, they, I don't like that. I don't like that people who like Avatar. Not like just casually. I mean, people that dress up in blue avatar and go running around a fart. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? It's just, I mean, to each their own if you want to do that. But like, what are we, I don't, I don't ever quite understand. Here's my thing. It's not because I think it's embarrassing because I don't. Like, I have friends who are furries. I love Comic Con. Love all of it. It's just that your taste level sucks. Because avatar is literally... Fern Gully, which we all remember Fern Gully, which we can get into that movie in a minute, with a budget. And I think James Cameron, like, I mean, he is a good director. I recently, I recently rewatched the Titanic because I was obsessed with that sub. I mean, it's a great movie. I, th- I used to not like it, and then I rewatched it again. I was like, you know what? It actually is a really good It's a great movie. movie. He is a very good director. Yes. It's just Aliens the movies too? are too long. They're too long. They don't need to be that long. I tried watching the first one, and I started sleeping a little bit through it. I do love Sigourney Weaver, though. I love that he has her in a lot of his movies. She's I love amazing. Sigourney Weaver. Um, he gets great actors and actresses. But the second, I love Kate Winslet. To me, Kate Winslet, I don't. Okay. she can do I no love wrong. Kate Winslet, except when she is voicing, and this is a lot of the characters. No, but they, they will tell you, because I've seen all the interviews, is that they weren't voice acting, they were acting. So okay, everything they did, they were acting. that's kind of even worse. Why? Because it is very clear that these movies were based off of, I know that they're made up characters, but they're based off of indigenous people. Right. People of color. It is so very clear it's candy. based all of that. And they're acting like that when they're white and British. Like it's, it just feels, especially the second one. Look, when the first one came out, we had never seen anything like it. It was cool. It was. We hadn't. I think. It was a phenomenon. I don't. I'm not with we, this. I wasn't blown away by the, the graphics. But the second one, I was like, okay, at this point, I have video games on my PlayStation that look the same. Like, the graphics aren't anything that special, it feels like. And it yeah. just feels uncomfortable. Because I know that that is Kate Winslet acting like an indigenous person. It's weird. It's It's weird. I just, I feel, I tried watching on the planet, tried watching the second one. I was like, you know what? I was like, the first one was whatever. I'll just watch the second one. It's a five hour flight to Mexico. I start playing it. I think I got like 20 minutes in. It was so embarrassing. You know what it is? It's like, if you, it's like musical theater energy. That was to me, the vibe of the movie is just sort of like middle school musical theater energy. Everyone is taking themselves way too seriously and yeah the graphics didn't look that good i was like i think like, Fortnite they're has better fine graphics. right but there are video games with better ones and the movie i mean well now I'll you appreciate video games with good graphics because me and jacob got it you a ps5 gotten the same point across an hour less well fern gully did it and it will never make sense to me why again don't get me wrong i love sigourney weaver i love that he uses her but in this movie there is a child Sigourney Weaver and instead of getting a new actor to voice and act said character they got 70 something year old Sigourney Weaver to voice and act this character so it just took you out of it because you're seeing this basically child and then the voice of Sigourney (laughs) Weaver and I'm like what are we doing here it's like with Harrison Ford in the last um, uh, Indiana Jones which is essentially 
like that was the tipping point. Disney is like crumbling as a result. But uh, they they changed his face. But I think he was still acting. So it was like a 30 year old Harrison Ford moving like an 80 year old. Right. It just like really. I just I, I, I'm curious, like when you're sitting in rooms, you have all that money and writing like who's not no saying, one said no. That's what I'm saying. Who's not saying no. James Who's Cameron, no if James you are Cameron. listening, or James Cameron's team, if you are listening, They're not. I will gladly be that person to say no. I have no problem telling someone no. Put me in the room. Well, I watched the <laughs> Oprah special with the Titanic uh, cast. Of course, Leonardo DiCaprio wasn't there. But uh, when you start listening to what happened behind the scenes, like he was like a tyrant. Like James yeah. Cameron, like, like, um, I think Kate Winslet got really sick and she was like hypothermic because the water was so cold and he was like, just deal with it and like screaming at them and like keeping them in water for hours and I, people getting hurt. And I was like, this is like, it's just a movie. It's like, just a movie. It's, I don't know. I, I do like Titanic. But I there's love going it. to be like four more avatars. Why? Then it, just make it a Why? TV series. Someone make it a TV series because I can't sit in a plane and have Avatar be every single option of a movie that I want to watch and then the parent trap with Lindsay Lohan. Each movie is like four hours. At that point, there's going to be like fucking 24 hours of one okay, series. Let me ask you, do you, and I'm going to go around the room, do you want to sit, what's your threshold when you're going to see a movie? Two hours, When we an hour start and a half? going over three hours, I'm like, this. I'm it's too much. Do you think that's like, ego or narcissism yes. in the director that's like they're nothing gonna... needs to be that long nothing absolutely nothing and if it does make it a mini series chris what's your threshold i'll see a long movie i usually don't but i'm going to see oppenheimer on sunday how, how long, long is, is oppenheimer three, Jeez, three hours and 20 minutes if i sit Wait, in a theater for Paige. three hours and 20 minutes they better drop a bomb i thought on me. you i hate you so much i don't like you i've never liked over you. three hours i don't that, think you're a good person we don't need it you have no self i guarantee when i go i could find 20 minutes to cut out you watch i'll take a note wait a minute i thought you saw oppenheimer no, i saw barbie no but you said that you everyone was talking about the nazis and you didn't understand why no the trailer for it <clears throat> oh so nick nick saw the trailer and we get on Fortnite, and then he's like well i I kept saying, why do they keep talking about the Nazis? I thought this was about the atomic bomb in Japan. I was like, dude. I didn't do know, you know Germany and Japan were in cahoots. Listen. <laughs> in the cahoots. Ed, the education system where I grew up was not great. I well, knew yeah, we dropped an atomic bomb on Japan, but they never mentioned Japan in the trailer. how many times we did that? Twice. Right. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay. But okay. in the trailer right. for the movie, they never mentioned Japan. They only mentioned the Nazis. And I kept thinking... Well, that's because that's I why the bomb was built. They were trying I to beat the Nazis in now, building the atomic bomb. But they never mentioned Japan in the trailer. And I'm thinking, when did we bomb the Nazis? Because they only talked about the Nazis. So I was confused. Which is explainable. <laughs> no, don't defend him, Paige. Okay, so wait, Paige, can we look up... How long is Oppenheimer? 320. 320. Because I wanted to go see it. I don't want to sit for four fucking hours to see that. I could barely get through Barbie. Okay, Paige, what's your threshold? You're going on a date. They take you out. Well, oh, okay. on a date. Okay, by yourself. Well, I'm not then. But with friends or by movie. yourself? Yeah, two twenty. I'm with Paige. I think two twenty is. I just don't think. It's three hours. It's three hours, but that's still that's really still, long. That's touching it. Well, are I, they going through his whole life? Like, do they show him being I mean. conceived? I can't like, what? imagine there was things that couldn't have been cut and you still got such a good movie out of it by cutting things. I just can't I, imagine that. I mean, that you can watch like a ton of history stuff on Oppenheimer. You, is that how you say his name? Oppenheimer, right? You can watch a ton of stuff on him and just in 20 minutes and learn what you're going to learn in three hours. I guess it's because the acting, I didn't realize Matt Damon was in the movie. Yeah. I had dinner with Matt Damon once. Yes. He came to the comedy cellar. He was, he's, he was having a few drinks and, um, uh, Thought it was so funny and like invited me over to the table with him he and must his have been wife. Fun. <laughs> he Jesus was, Christ! He was. We have a picture together and everything. I was so blown away. I was like, "Oh my God, Matt Damon! It's crazy." When did he take out the restraining order? About two days later. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. wasn't that farther. He's off. in it, and Josh Peck is in it. Why do I know Josh From Peck? Nickelodeon, Drake and Josh. 
Really? He was the You know, can I say it makes, one? it makes me happier it makes me happy when I see people that we saw growing up still working. Yeah. I honestly wasn't he the one that like ever since TikTok or something, like he really started to explode again and then started getting back into acting. Yeah. And Drake Drake like went missing what? in Florida for a period of time. These childhood stars, though, it's it's that's a it's a rough gig. You who came out great is Miley Cyrus. I saw her on a, literally. I saw her on an interview and she was talking about coming through all of that and drugs and alcohol and the, and she really just seemed well grounded and she's like, yeah, I just like live on this farm with my family and I love it and I have a good time and. I, I think don't, they don't think all she, have a rough patch at some point. Who did? Really? Yeah, yeah that's what I, I mean. Don't. I think everyone always goes, as a childhood star, goes through a rough... I like, Lindsay Lohan went through a rough patch, and now she's thriving. Yes, and I Drew will, Barrymore. I mean... Yes, Drew Barrymore, famously too. Famously yeah, went I through a very long, Drew. rough patch, and now she's, like, the face of everything. I forgot that Drew Barrymore had, like... That was who I she mean, was for a long time. And so was Robert Downey Jr. People look at him now as like, oh my God, like he's such a, a you know. So and I he think is. Every like, child star goes, like Miley had a bit of a rough patch there. No, I think it was, look, all those, when you're that famous and you're that young, it's rougher than you can imagine. You know, it was like her, Demi Lovato, Britney Spears, like even Mariah, like the, uh, Christina. I feel like Selena Gomez didn't really have a rough patch. She's dealt. But she would tell you otherwise. Well, no, she's dealt with a lot of mental health issues, but like. She wasn't out on drugs or like shaving her head or anything publicly. I was gonna Again, say I don't Jody, know what she's doing behind closed doors. I was gonna say Jodie Foster did it right, but then someone tried killing the president for her. So I think things just don't go well for it just it's Fair. a rough world. Zendaya. Uh yes. Pretty she, she is, I think, one of the most beautiful people stunning. on the face of the planet. Absolutely I mean, I really think like stunning. if you were gonna show like an alien race what humans look like, I would push her to the front. Hillary Duff. She, she really. came out great. But no, I be, even like Melissa, what's her name? Melissa Flockhart from Clarissa and Sabrina. Oh, Melissa. Melissa. Na, 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 dun, dun, dun. Na, 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 Sabrina, na, the teenage witch. Na. Melissa Joan Hart. Melissa Joan Hart. Well, she's okay. like the queen of Lifetime Christmas movies now or something. One well, of those, right? Well, she talked about how she was clubbing and drinking and doing drugs. And, and she was right out there with, uh, Paris and, and Brittany and everyone, but like I somehow she stayed under the radar. I don't know how, but even she dealt with it. I'm just trying to think of like who's like a child actor that was, we're all like, yeah, like it can, you came out great. I mean, they're all great now, but like they had their rough patch. Yeah. Can we think of any? Emma Watson? Yeah, Emma Watson's good. Daniel Radcliffe? <laughs> they never Daniel really Radcliffe. Had rough patches, though. He what? They didn't have rough patches. They just kind of. They just kind of were allowed but to age. I, British child stars and American child stars, very different. Well, no, I, I'm not a fan of Ashley. British Kutcher. child stars, they don't go through like the same rough patch, I think, as American. Or they child do, stars. but they just have such nice accents that we don't, we can't right. detect it. No, you know, it's like when I was growing up, it was so hard, but it's it's good to have found my way back. And you're like. Yeah. In America, Miley's like, yeah, I did drugs. You know, like, it's like, it's completely different. Um, we have one minute left. I guess we could say. Are you going to finish Avatar? I'm not. I'm exhausted by the whole thing. I really think some, I wish James Cameron would hire you to say no. I think he's, he's, he's better when he's doing, like Titanic was magical. Yes, it has its flaws and stuff, but you rewatch it with fresh eyes and it, it is a good movie. Um, I saw the second one to see the second one. The like second Titanic? People. No, no, no. The second Avatar. But now that I know that 3, 4, 5, 18 are coming out, I have no desire to see well, them. Well, where are the I characters going to go? Don't. It's enough. What are they going to do? Like, at least to start. Well, but that's the thing. I don't even care. Right. I don't care what they do at this point. Right. It's enough. James. Jimmy. Okay. Thank you for listening and watching to another episode of I've Never Liked You. Feel free to listen to the podcast anywhere you get podcasts or watch on YouTube. Until next time.